Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my live streams on mathematics and I'm going to show you an integration technique uh, that uses an idea called completing the square. Okay, so let me um, step you through an example and uh, we can see how it works. Alright, here we are. We are given this in indefinite integral here and let's call um, <clears throat> the integral i. Now, when you see this kind of problem, probably the first thing that springs to mind if you've, if you've, you know, if you're a little bit um, uh, experienced with these kinds of problems is, well, let's try to factor the denominator and use a method called partial fractions. Okay, it's very natural, this is very common in a calculus 2 course to use these kinds of methods. But the challenge with this denominator is it doesn't factor into linear factors over the, the real numbers. So what do we do? Well, I'm going to show you uh, a method to move forward on this called completing the square. All right. So <clears throat> first of all, we note x squared plus 4x plus 13 does not factor over the real numbers. Okay, by this thing I mean the, real, the set of real numbers. Okay, so how, how do we do it? Well, let's complete the square and then um, we will um, put it in, in a form where we can use an inverse tan. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. All right, so when we're completing the square in the denominator, essentially it's writing the denominator as the sum of two squares. Okay, now to do this, you can do it a couple of ways, but the fail-safe way is to look at the coefficient of x. It's positive 4 here. You take half that coefficient, 2, you square it, you add it, and you take it away. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so let's take half that coefficient. I'm going to, so, so it's 2. I'm going to square it and add it. And then I'm going to take the same thing away. So nothing's really changed here. I've just put in a 2 squared and taken away a 2 squared. Now the nice thing about the way I've written it is that this now can be factored to x plus 2 all squared and this can be simplified. Okay? So this first underlined expression is x plus 2 all squared and we've got 13 minus 4 which is 9 or 3 squared if you like. Okay, so I've written this as the sum of two squares. Okay. But it's not clear how that has helped us. How's it actually helped us? Well, like I said before, we're going to get this expression to lead to an inverse tan. So let me show you how that's related to what we're doing here. All right. <clears throat> So we know, or we should know, that the integral of 1 on, say, u squared plus a squared, where a is the constant, du, this is just an inverse tan. Okay, it's 1 on a times the inverse tan of u on a, plus a constant of integration, which I'll just leave out here. Okay, so how does this actually combine with what we've got? Well, what we're going to try to do is get this to look something like this. Okay, and we've already got that because we've written the denominator something squared plus a constant squared. Something squared plus a constant squared. Okay, so let's rewrite this in this form and, and see how we go. Okay, I'll take a new page for that.
All right. By the way, if you're wondering where this comes from, um, you can do it using trig substitutions. All right, so we've got i, which is our integral, and writing it in this with this um, sum of squared denominator, we get the following. Okay. All right, so let's let u equal x plus 2 and a would be 3. If u equals x plus 2, then du will be uh, dx. So this, these things won't change. So this can be directly applied now. Okay. So we're going to get 1 on 3, tan inverse, u on a. So if u is x plus 2, it'll be x plus 2 all over a, which is 3, plus a constant. Okay, let me move that up a bit. All right, so this then is the inverse tan function that I was talking about. All right. Now, some of you are probably thinking, hang on, you jumped a few steps there. Let me go through and fill in those steps. All right, firstly, let me just justify that the step from here to here. So let's call this, um, say, star. Okay. So this line follows from star with the substitution u equals x plus 2. So uh, du equals dx. All right, so you sub those in there, you get 1 on u squared plus 3 squared du, and we know that that's that with a equals 3. Okay, and now a good question here is where does this come from? Okay, where does this come from? Well, that's probably the subject of another video, but let me just give you a quick outline of where that comes from. Okay, so as a very, we've already solved the problem, but just for those of you who are interested. Okay. Let's consider this. Um, let um, u equal a, say, tan theta. All right, so if u equals a tan theta, what's du going to be? Well, a, a is a constant. If we differentiate tan, we get sec squared theta. So it's going to be a sec squared theta d theta. Okay, let's make that a smaller, small letter L. So then this, after we make the substitution, is going to become, well, d, a sec squared theta uh, d theta out here, and in the bottom we're going to have a squared tan squared theta, plus a squared. Now this you might think, well come on Chris, this is looking complicated now, but no, this, this denominator you're just using uh, tan squared theta plus 1 equals sec squared theta. This will simplify now. Okay, so here we've used tan squared theta plus 1 equals sec squared theta. So now you can see Cancel, 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 cancel. So I'm going to get the integral of basically 1 on a, 
So one on A can come out the front, D theta. So that now is one on A theta plus, say, a constant. Okay, so how am I going to get, get this theta? Well, let's go back to our original substitution. U equals A tan theta. So tan theta equals U on A. So I'm going to draw a little right angle triangle and try to get um, this theta. Okay, let's just call this th this angle theta. It, it doesn't matter which, which one you do. Okay, so U on A equals tan theta. All right, so tan is opposite over adjacent, yeah? So that's the opposite side, that'll be U, and that'll be the adjacent side, A. And this length, the hypotenuse squared, equals the A squared plus U squared. Okay, so this will be U squared plus A squared square root by Pythagoras. Okay, so now, The theta is just the tan inverse of this, okay? Uh, U on A plus constant. Now, um, strictly speaking, this actually isn't required to go from here to here, okay? But in some of these problems, it is required. So I just actually drew that just by instinct and um, I, it actually wasn't necessary, okay? So this, let's just line that up with what we have over here. That's exactly what we have, okay? So that's, this integral is this, okay? Now you didn't need that, but sometimes um, for these problems, when you're doing trig substitutions, you do need that, okay? So I didn't really need that, that diagram there. Okay, so what did you think? Let's just recap. The denominator wouldn't factor over the reals. We completed the square by looking at the coefficient of x, halving it, squaring it, adding it and taking it away, and then uh, compressing it to the sum of two squares. Our goal is to get this kind of integral, which we know is leads to an inverse tan. We replaced the denominator with the sum of two, the sum of squares, and then went straight to the tan. Okay, and this follows from a, a basic substitution. All right, and of course, just to sort of put put all your minds at rest, the star is the star justification is is here. Okay, that's just a trig substitution, and I've looked at those in other videos. Okay, everyone, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear them. I'm also trying to increase my visibility on mobile devices. So if you're watching on a mobile device, if you're watching on your phone, please let me know what your experience is like. Thanks again for watching. See you all later. Bye.